Welcome back to part 2 of horizontal alignment. In the first part of horizontal alignment, you would have noticed that we didn't have a transition. Part 2, we will concentrate on the transition of the horizontal curve. The transition curve. Before we start off, what we didn't cover in the last video was there, there were actually two possibilities that we could have considered using this equation here. The first is when you, what is termed as free steering condition. What is free steering condition is when F is taken as zero. We know that the design speed is 80 kilometers per hour and we can assume that the super elevation E is at maximum, which is 10%. G is equal to the 9.81. By rearranging the equation, we therefore can solve for R based on the fact that we've got a free steering condition and there's no frictional acceleration and F is equal to 0. R is equal to V squared of divided by EG. V, we know the speed is 80 kilometers per hour times 0, 0.278 to convert it to meters per second or squared divided by your maximum super elevation 10%, so that's 0 0.1 times 9.81, giving you a radius of 504.197 meters. So the most ideal radius for our horizontal curve will be a radius of 504 or larger. Since we seldom able to achieve a free steering condition due to the geometric constraints, um, due to, uh, there's no such a thing as, we, we don't get conditions where there's no friction at all. Um, also, the different materials we use because of geometric constraints and a whole lot of factors, we cannot, um, it's, it's almost impossible to get a free steering condition. We therefore need to determine what the minimum permissible radius is. In this case, we would therefore firstly need to determine what the sideward forces coefficient, coefficient is for 80 kilometers per hour. So where we, um, not going to repeat this, but basically quickly what we did last week is we calculated the F max and we, and, uh, in the last video, sorry, F max we calculated and that was 0, 0,14. And we did calculate a radius of 210.02 um, of 082. So we calculated two radiuses. One was for free steering condition, right? And the other one, we, um, they, we, 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 we actually used F max. So the first one, F is equal to zero. In the second one, F, we used it, the F max. Let's just continue to where we're supposed to be in, with regard to where we stopped last, uh, in the last video. The last video we stopped here, so we're going to take it from there. Since we already know that for free steering condition, we would need a radius of at least 504.197, and that's what I just calculated a um, couple of seconds ago, we need not start by using F is equal to zero. We can therefore try um, a super elevation value of, say, 8%, and then calculate the F actual value. Using the standard equation, E plus F is equal to V squared upon um, RG. We, we can apply that in the formula. The F actual that we work out is 0, 0,1217. And that is less than the F max. And if you remember, just before this, we remember the F max that we calculated just now was 0, 0,14. Right, so because 0, 0,1217 is less than 0, 0,14, therefore we okay. So we less than the F, so the F actual is less than the F max, so therefore we fine. We now need to transition this curve. So the first part we had, we had no transition, we had an ordinary circular curve. Now we're having a circular curve with the transition. We therefore need to determine the required transition length. Given the rate of the centrifugal acceleration of 0 0.4 and using the design speed of 80 kilometers per hour, the transition length is equal to V squared over QR. Remember, 
the centrifugal, uh, centripetal acceleration that we um, that has been given to us and in the question uh, it will be given the question or was given the question was 0 0.4 so v squared is 80 times 0 0.278 or cubed divided by qr um, q is 0 0.4 times 250 giving you 110.03 meters we are round up to 115 meters we can now calculate the shift of the circular curve the shift is equal to l squared over 20 r 24 r l which we just calculated which is our transition length which is 115 uh, or squared divided by 24 times your r you know your r radius has been 250 giving you a shift of 2.204 meters and therefore, the tangent length for the transition curve will be tangent length is equal to r plus s tan theta over 2 plus l over 2, which is equal to 250 plus the shift, which we just calculated to 2,204 times 10. Remember, in the previous video, we had uh, calculated theta to be 41 degrees 56 minutes 35 seconds divided by 2 plus. The transition length which is 115 meters divided by 2. Don't confuse the tangent length with the transition length. Right? And to illustrate that, the tangent length is the straight, oh sorry there's a little curve that should have been darker here, apologies for that. The tr transition length is the little straight that you, uh, little shift that you have before the curve actually starts. So it starts shifting a bit and then the curve actually starts. So when you're calculating the transition length, that's what you calculated 115. When you calculated the tangent length, that's what you calculated over there, that 154.168. That's the 154.168 compared to the 115. We can therefore determine the SKD of the beginning of the trans uh, BTC of the transition curve. Taking the SKD of PR1, how did we get 12,001.033? Uh, SKD of PI1 was the PI1 and the distance from PI1 to PI2 on the previous video you will see was 141.033 giving you 12001.033 there's your PI1 11860 we had calculated in the previous video right the distance from from the BCC, uh, from from this PI start, is one forty one point zero three three, and that will bring you to PI two, which is twelve double zero one point zero three three. That's the twelve double zero one point zero three three. Twelve double zero one point zero three three minus one fifty four. So we, we that's how we get to PI two. Right? If we take PI2 and we subtract the tangent length, uh, sorry, the tangent length of the transition curve, we will get the S SKD of the beginning of the transition curve. So by definition, the beginning of the transition curve is your PI minus your tangent length. In this case here, PI2 was, we calculated 12, 001.033 minus the tangent length that we calculated just now, giving you 11846.865. We now need to calculate the curve length in order that we may determine the SKD of the ETC1. The curve length is R theta in radians plus 1. So you, right? so you know R, you know theta, you know the L value, you substitute all of that and then you get your curve length equal to 298.5. So your SKD of the ETC is right, this SKD that we just calculated above, which is 11846.865 plus 
plus your curve length that we just calculated, 298.011, giving you 12144.876. Right. This is illustrated on these diagrams over here, so you can refer to these diagrams here later on. We now need to tabulate these SKDs. The BTC is one, actually not given, we, we sort of uh, did some basic calculations and we've, right, um, and we ended up getting 11846.865. That's what we calculated there. The beginning of the circular curve number one is your BTC1 plus L. So basically, it's BTC1, BTC1 is 11846.865 plus L that we calculated to be 115, right? The L that we calculated was 115, giving you 11961.865. Your BCC, uh, sorry, your ECC1, right? Uh, ECC1 is your beginning of your transition curve plus your curve length minus L. So effectively, or, but let's, I prefer doing the ETC one first because it's the beginning of your uh, transition curve plus your curve length, right? So what we have over here is the beginning of your transition curve is 11846.865, which is here, plus your curve length that we calculated to be 298. Let's see that. the 298 that we calculated here, right, giving you 12144.876. So your BTC plus your C is your 12144.86. All you have to do is minus L, you minus your 1.5 from this value over here, and you get your end of your circular curve 1. So with your transition curve, you have a bit of a deflection and the curve actually starts. You have a bit of a shift and then your curve starts. That's what we're looking at over here. There's a slight shift. Sorry, this line should have been a bit darker. There's a slight shift over here and then it curves out there. Right? All these that we calculated, I have put it onto um, this drawing over here so that will make more sense and have also included all the calculations we've done um, With the procedures as well on this rough sketch over here, which should assist you in your understanding Thank you. That concludes part two of horizontal alignment before we conclude I have one or two take-home questions one of the take-home questions is When would you need a transition curve? These are your research type questions. I need you to quick um, research this and we will discuss this. When would you need a transition curve? So sometimes you just have an ordinary circular curve and sometimes you have a circular curve, uh, a transition curve where you have a bit of a shift and then the curve starts, a bit of a shift and then the curve starts. So when will you have, um, when will you use a transition and when won't you use in a transition? That's a bit of a take-home question. Thank you, guys. That concludes part two of horizontal alignment.